Chisholm on a rush, gets around the corner, comes in, shot saved by Johnson. There's a long pass up ahead. Brian Green, backhand, shot save on the backhand by Aiello. Be the first player onto it. Eludes a double team, comes away with it, puts a backhander on net. Susie's there for the up ahead for McAuliffe, gains the blue line, tries to fire one on, but Dave Almeida's right there to knock it down. Pass in front, and it's in! A backhand, kind of a blind pass in front, and turns it over. Grade gets in there first, turns it over, pass right in the front, and a score by St. Mike's. Number 17, Nick Hermery. And here comes Aiello. Aiello tries to center one, it pops free, and O'Sullivan! Pains it home for St. Anselm. And the Hawks come back. Liam O'Sullivan. And we're gonna watch, you know, watch the goal here again. Chisholm with the first shot. And then O'Sullivan. Indirect pass behind the net. Andrucci out high for Gorski. Fakes the one-timer. Spins and it pops up in the air and it's in! Kind of an accidental goal. I don't even know who got it. But the important thing is it's in the back of the net for the Hawks. The power play goal is tied at a two. Seems like Kevin Curley is going to take the credit for it. But it's a power play goal at 4.45 of the second period. He gets worked behind the net and then out high. Gorski with the slap pass for Kerrigan and it kind of bounces up in the air and Curley's the one who bangs it home. So Kerrigan's going to get an assist as well. Going in after it is Aiello. He's got it first. And it pops free. And a pass out in front. And what a shot there and a save by Johnson off the stick of O'Sullivan. Gets rubbed off the play, but it's picked up by D'Antuano. D'Antuano with speed. Centers one. Pops free for Olivitz. Two backhands went in. Andrew Olivitz on the backhand as the initial pass got deflected right to him. He was Johnny on the spot. And the Purple Knights have regained the lead at three to two. And St. Mike's with the lead again. That shot deflected in! It took a couple of pinballs out in front. And Susie left the net wide open. Nothing he could do about that. And it deflected off a, off a couple of different players by Sel Narby. Barry for Narby for Ouellette. Shot stopped by Susie and worked out free. Rookie of the year in the Northeast 10 this year. Here's Pilata, two on one with Ferraro. Pilata to Ferraro, nicely defensed away by Nathan Foyce. As Narby off the face off, puts that one just wide. It bounces free and in. Rebound off the end boards for St. Michael's. And it looks like it's gonna be Sam Finkelstein. And our first three goal lead of the game, St. A's will change. Here's Finkelstein, backhand, puts it in front, and over the head of Kane off the stick of Nick Hermery. Chisholm will take the face off for St. A's. We're gonna get in, it'll be Eric Salzillo. Voice has Dan Tuano, has Finkelstein, the shot stopped by Kane. His shot got turned aside though. Ferraro keeps it in for Andrucci. His shot is held into the left or right shoulder. Able to jump in onto the puck. He gets it back, puck pops loose for Gorski. Gorski's shot is in! It took a deflection. I think Mike Ferraro got a piece of it on the way through. I believe Ferraro is going to get credit for the goal, but trust me, Nobody in white cares who, as long as it's them. Off is going to cover at center ice. That's usually a very good giveaway as we got the replay here as, yeah, I think Ferraro got a tip and Chris Johnson was calling for goaltender interference. And now quickly back ahead comes St. Ansel. Here's a long stretch pass and Finkelstein has knocked away by Harrington just before he could get control of it and get the breakaway. Here's Femia with the shot. And that one goes behind the goalie, Johnson, and came out the other side. O'Sullivan with it. Works it ahead for Aiello, his shot patted away. Does, still with it. Now Ferraro centers for Pilata, but it's intercepted cleanly by Paul McAuliffe. 
Thought about a centering pass, couldn't get there. Here's Jake Green with a blast. It's knocked down in front, and then Justin Longo bangs it in. And it's 5-4. The Hawks have clawed back within one with 8.22 to go. For Green, Green centers one for Aiello, couldn't get to him. Harrington shot, knocked down in front, and covered up by Johnson with 7.16 to go. Look at the goal, we have the last goal here for the Hawks is there's Grade with the blast and Justin Longo, wow, quick reactions. To Gorski back to Curley, Curley's got a goal, his shot knocked down in front but kept in. Curley's shot is in, deflected in, off the stick of, I'm not even sure who got it in, the initial shot was deflected over the stick and shoulder of Chris Johnson, and we are tied at five. Unbelievable. Nice drop, and here we go. Replay again here. And again, Curley able to keep it in. And again, couldn't quite see it. Looks like Ferraro is the one who's taking credit for the goal. Here's a chance here for St. Anne's. Green, top three for Harrington. Harrington shot, stopped by Johnson, and then he covers it up. Comes free for Salzillo, works on the backhand. Can't spin it, pop free, and Barry may have gotten a stick on it. It stays in, Harrington up ahead for Longo, there's nobody there, Longo with the shot. Loved in by Chris Johnson. Back to Gray, he tries to put one in, but Salzillo knocks it down. We are through 60 minutes, nothing has been decided in the Northeast 10 championship game. Five to five after three unanswered goals in the third period by the St. Anselm Hawks. For as Roulette tries to put one in. Here's Salzillo, his shot point blank stopped by Kane. And now Cameron pushes it forward. Centering pass for Chisholm, no. And the shot by Aiello gets stopped on the near side. Johnson lost it. He's none the worse for the wear. He's going to stay out there. And now a chance here for D'Antuano. But it's into the midsection of Kane. Ferraro has Pilata. Will backhand it in. Pilata will be onto it first. He centers it for Andrucci. And now Curley with the blast that goes just past the far side. And now Narby with it will try a long one. It'll go wide and a diving play by Curley out there. And now a chance again. Hermery for Finkelstein. Finkelstein with the shot. Kind of a change up. And Brendan Kane with the easy catch. Each team scoring 80 plus goals on the season. Here's Barry with a rising shot. Something minor like that. Here's Aiello with the top shot. Whoa, Johnson fought that one off. And now here's D'Antuano stepping through. He's got Finkelstein middle and he just missed him. The pass was up in the air. And then a long shot taken by Jordan who gets it back. And that one deflected and somehow Brendan Kane squeezed the pads together and kept that from going through the five hole. I think he even surprised himself with that save. Off the morning, so we're gonna see that one again. Jordan got deflected, oh, got deflected by John Femia. That was almost put in by a St. Anselm player and somehow Brendan Kane able to squeeze the pass and he's looking around <laughs> and then he looks between his legs and says, hey, there you are. Voice almost turns it over to Mike Ferraro. That's not the guy you want to turn it over to. Cameron with Chisholm. He'll fire the shot, just missed on the far side. And that's gonna come all the way down back behind Kane. But he had that far side on the shot and just missed it. See if Cameron tries it again. Said he's gonna get it ahead to Aiello. Aiello the long shot and glove save by Chris Johnson. Telegraph that pass that was picked off by Flack. Centering pass comes to nobody. Bouncing puck goes wide. Andrucci wants to do something with it. Gets it back to Curley. Top of the umbrella. Centering pass is in! And the Saints of Hawks! have won the NE10 championship. A power play goal by Jeremy Kerrigan. He kind of whiffed on it. Jeremy Kerrigan.
kind of healed it, and it popped over the head of Chris Johnson. And that is how the St. Anthem Hawks have won the Northeast 10 Championship. Three goals in the third period to tie it at five. A power play goal at 12-13 of overtime by Jeremy Kerrigan. The junior wins it for St. Anselm. Unbelievable finish to this one. Watch it again. Pass comes from Gorski. Eventually, it gets worked around to Nick Gorski. He's the one who really set up the play. Actually, yeah, it went through to Gorski as Kerrigan, again, didn't really get all of it, but got enough of it and put it into a beautiful position. here one last time at Sullivan Arena where the Hawks for the 10th time are holding up the NE10 championship banner. And you look at the other side, obviously for St. Mike's, a, a very disappointing ending to a terrific season. Well, you know, I'm really proud of the guys. I mean, I think, I think uh, you know, I just talked to them about, uh, you know, winning is obviously fun. I think the life lesson from this whole thing is the fact that uh, they can take this away forever and ever in the sense that it's about sticking together. And uh, I thought the guys stuck together through some some times in that game where we could have just given up. And, and uh, so there was, you know, championship teams have resilience, and I thought we had some real resilience when it did get to, you know, five two. We talked about it in the locker room. We just got to get to three, and then let it happen. But uh, you know, so to get it to three and then quickly make it four, and uh, really proud of the guys. You know, and Kaner, you know, did a great job, and the guys rallied around him, and. Uh, you know, it was nothing, nothing with Seuss, it just it was, we needed to change and uh, you know, I thought uh, Kenny did a wonderful job and I thought the whole guy, everybody contributed in some shape or form. Yeah, I, don't, I, I think the biggest thing is just, uh, I talked to the guys before the game about the process and you, you've got to worry about the process of how we play and not worry about the outcomes. And when you, when you just focus on the process, the outcomes will take care of themselves. So we spent, you know, we started that all year, and I think you know there was a transition period for the guys that uh, was really, really difficult. And I think uh, it, you know they they bent, but they didn't break, and they and they kept kept to it, kept to it, and then a little bit of success. And I think the wins, you know, win, winning can become a habit. You know, so can losing. And you know, we were on the we were on the the, the, the good end of the stick, so to speak. And that, that we've, I think it's 13 out of 15, or 13 out of 14 
at, at this point. But uh, everybody contributed, and, I, and I, it was someone different every night. So I, you know, I'm really proud of the guys and how they persevered throughout the year. You know, and, and you look at some of the scores. You know, uh, you know our, our our top guy Mike scored. Um, you, you know, I think Curly got one. Nick Borski got one. He's been hurt and scored a big goal to make. And I think make that five three. Um, but you know, my hat goes off to Jeremy. Jeremy was 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 sick as a dog. Was you know sick in, in the locker room between periods. Two or three times he came out late for the period and scores the power play goal on just get the puck to the net and see what happens. You know, I couldn't believe when uh, when it went in. But uh, happy for the guys, proud of the guys, and certainly for the institution. It's something that uh, you know our whole institution should be proud of. Yeah, you know, I thought I thought uh, as we got closer in, in the game, I thought our guys were closer in their gaps. You notice there was a lot of poke checks. There was a lot of back pressure in the sense of guys back checking. And it, guys just started to play. And I don't know what it was in the first period and, and, and for a good part of the second. It was just like we were a little bit uh, giddy. Like we were just like get, doing things that we're not accustomed to doing. So I think once the guy settled and just played and played with a little bit of, of uh, uh, momentum, I think things started to come. And, and, and that's part of our game, blocking shots and, and, and poke checking. And then, you know, Kana just, uh, I thought when he made his first save, and, and, and it was kind of like he was a sponge and, and sucked it right in. And, and uh, I think the guys on the bench were like, "Oh, okay, let's 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 play for him now." So um, again, I you know I thought I thought he, he did a great job. I, you know, uh, uh, Liam and Joey, like Joey number five, uh, Joey Harrington, kind of a uh, uh, one of those players that. You don't see a lot on the score sheet, but he just did so many little things well tonight. Calmed down some, some of our defensemen who were struggling early, and I thought he played a great game for us.